everybody it is a wonderful magnificent day it is friday and i hope that you are having um a wonderful afternoon it's lunchtime hopefully you're eating healthy um hopefully that's your subject Joe. hopefully you're eating healthy hopefully you are um hopefully you're so of course hopefully that your mind uh is thinking on a more positive note um because we don't have any room for negativity i just wanted to just jump on tipic i haven't been with y'all in a minute though sullivan but um something interesting happened to me today and i wanted to share it with you so let me just give you the backdrop of what's happening i am um I'm in the I'm in my, so well, so I'm in the, the, a master's degree program at the University of Baltimore, right? I'm getting ready to graduate. Everything has ran smoothly. Everything is was wonderful, so on and so forth. What's up, Joe? Everything was wonderful, so on and so forth, right? So this, um, I can't see. Y'all gotta pardon me. I can't see. I gotta put my glasses back on. Uh, so this, um. So I so in July, you know, this is when I enter my internship, right? So in July, um, I set everything up. As a matter of fact, I set it up in June. Set everything up in June, uh, and had everything, you know, sealed and every and ready to go um, for today. It was our course for today. We were, I was supposed to meet with my advisor, um, my both of my advisors. Uh, the lady, I just came from the gym, y'all have to pardon me. My glasses are fogging up. <laughs> but I, uh, I, and the, the director of the, um, the place where I'm doing my internship. Lo and behold, and I took a vacation day today. My last vacation, because I spent the, all of my other vacation, you know, with my son, right? Uh, so I spent my last vacation day, which means that I don't have any more vacation days for the remainder of the year. I spent my last one on this internship, right? I had the internship, did the interview, all of that, right? I'm ready to go. I'm get ready to graduate and have my master's degree. Super excited. I worked hard, did 70 page papers, I did X, Y, Z. Now I'm I'm supposed to be in cruise control, right? Had the interview set for today with my advisors, with the director, so on and so forth at four o'clock. The director, <laughs> the, the director emails bypass me. I don't even know how, how, how they got my advisor's email bypassed me emailed him late last night and said we're going to have to cancel we're going to have to cancel the interview I don't have any more vacation days I'm getting ready to graduate the first in my family right give my, my kids something to look forward to I never graduated from high school getting my masters at a, 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 a A1 um, a, a one school, and now when I'm at the 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 top of the totem pole, this happens. I was unnerved. Anxiety started to kick in. What am I going to do? And let me just uh, let me just uh, uh, say this to you: is that when everything around you. It's out of control. That's when you have to put yourself in control. Let me give it to you again. When everything around you, it seems to be falling apart. You have to keep yourself together regardless of what's going on around you. So I said, I called my, you know, talk to my advisor. He had called me. He said, Richard, this is out of the ordinary. In my 15 years of doing this, I've never had a, uh, uh, um, Never had a, a director. They're not even supposed to do this. They don't know that this is a, this affects your grade if they do this. I said, no. So now I'm frantic. I called them this morning and act as if I didn't even know that they sent the email. Right? 
I asked, I said, I said specifically, I said, I said, um, I said, are we still meeting today? He said, no, with the coldness. I said, because this is the assistant director. I said, well, I don't have, I, 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 I said, is it any possible way that we can meet? Um, because, um, this is, this is affecting my grade. No, we probably can meet after the holiday, but not today. We have to reschedule. I said, well, nobody called me. Nobody told, look, it's on you. If you want to meet next week, we can do that. So on and so forth in a cold, harsh manner. Let me give it to you again. I'm ready to graduate. Everything is right there. And things are starting or seemingly starting to fall apart. And you're right there at the cusp of a, a breakthrough moment. And it seems like everything around you seems to be just falling apart. Everything around you seems to go astray. John Steinbeck has this book called out. Uh, it said, and, and, he, and I quote, he said, the best seeming plans of mice and of men often go astray. And this is the time where you have to not be worried, not let it unravel you. But you have to keep you intact. Even if you can't keep the things around you intact, you have to keep you intact. Why? Because you're the common denominator of it all. So, hung up the phone, called my advisor. And I said, well, he said, it's not going to happen today, Richard. I said, okay. Came to the gym. I'm not worried. Lord, I was a little, you know, unnerved for a minute, but I'm not worried. Um hit somebody up on, on one of my friends who had invited me to do an internship earlier but I, I turned their internship down because I had already had this one in place just called me while I was in, gym, in the gym a few minutes they said yeah we, we would love to have you as an intern come see us Wednesday Wednesday morning and it just so happened It just so happened that I'm going in late that day. Even when it seems like everything around you is falling apart. That's when you know that you're in line for something to happen. If everything is going right, if ain't nobody talking about you, if you're not if disappointment is not going your is coming your way, if you're not feeling frustrated about something, if something is is, is something if people are uh, uh if some people are not being mean to you, if everybody's being nice to you and things of that nature, that means that you're doing something wrong. That means that you're doing something absolutely wrong. Because either you're pleasing people, either you're just going around living an average life and you're just letting stuff happen to you if that's happening. But when things are falling apart, when things are not happening for you, that means that something is about to happen and you have to keep it together. So, what are you going to do when they, I, I, what are you going to do if they call you cook? What are you going to do if they call you about this internship, Cook? The ones that let you down, Cook? I'm going to say thank you, but no thank you. Because some people think that because you're look, because you you're, you're this close that you need them for something. No. We don't do no begging. We don't do no kissing up. Just because you're in need of something does it mean that you lose yourself in the need? Let me give it to you again. Just because you're in need of something, does it mean you lose yourself in the need? It's the gas, I'm, I'm gonna close with this. It's this gas station in, uh, in back of me, right? And I told this story before. Good God am I. It's a gas station in back of me. When I was, when I was broke, right? Look, I'm getting emotional, a little bit emotional. Pardon me for a second. But when I was broke, right, and I, I was on E, I went to this gas station and back up me, right? Didn't have any money. The only money that I had to my name 
was the money that was in my ashtray, right? Got the money out of this ashtray, right? And, uh, and, 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 I take it, right? Hold on for a second. I take it and it's three dollars and forty nine cents, right? I take it to this guy, the, the over here, this this gas station, Amico gas station, right here on uh, this right down road, in Patterson. And I said, give me three dollars and forty nine cents on on pump six, right? He said, man, I'm not taking all of that change, man. My friend, go parole it up somewhere. Get it out of here. Roll it up somewhere. I said, but this is all I have, right? He said, roll it up. And, uh, but it's not enough. In my mind, it's, I said, you know, I'm like, roll it up. You talking to me like that? He said, my friend, roll it up and, and bring it back. But it wasn't enough to roll it up because it was $3.49. So, you know, you know, you need 40 pennies, uh, $2 and nickels, so on and so forth. I went back to pump six with no gas and all this change and I screamed to the top of my lungs and I said God how can you do this to me alright and I went home I had enough to make it home went into my daughter's uh, uh, well my piggy bank I had a piggy bank got some quarters out of there um, and it was like another three dollars. Nevertheless, took it to the gas station, so on and so forth. I'm saying all that to say, you can't let whatever's happened around you unravel you. Keep your mind straight and on a positive foundation, knowing that something amazing is going to happen to you. People think you need they, that you need them. You, in turn, allow things that's happening to you make you think that you need certain people. But you don't need them. All of my blessings, listen to me, you have to get this. When I was down and out, you got to get this, this is important. When I was down and out, one, maybe two family members helped me. Everything else came from strangers. Did you hear what I said? When I was down and out, the people that I thought that would come to my aid, the people that I thought that would help me, never gave me anything. And I'm saying all that to say, the people you think that's in your circle, that you're going to need, and you keeping around just in case you need them, won't, won't even be the people that's going to pull up. Today is going to be an exciting day. Don't let the things trying to strip you take your clothes off. Don't let the things that's happening to you dismantle you. Why? Because if God be for you, good God Almighty. Let me say it again. Because if God be for you, let me see, give it to you one more time. Because if God be for you, who in the world can be against you? So what's going to happen, Cook? I'm going Wednesday. I'm going to put on my favorite cologne. I'm put. I'm going to put on a bow tie. I'm going to go there. I'm going to smile. And I'm going to give them the best introductory. And I'm giving them my all when I do the internship. Why is that cook? Because what was what I thought was for me wasn't really for me. What I thought I had in the bag wasn't in the bag. So God had to shift me from what I thought was already to what he know was ready for me. They said, oh, we need a male. We need you. Just come and you already got it. When God positions you, all you got to do is walk into it. When God positions you, 
All you have to do is just start stepping and stop talking. Because oftentimes we talk ourselves out of our own blessing. Start thinking positive. Start speaking positive. And start walking forward without looking back. I love you. Trust me, I love you. But God loves you back. Can y'all say that with me? If God be for me. If he's for me. Who? Who? Just, just name one. Who in the world can do anything against me? Who in the world can hurt me? Who in the world can cause me pain? If he is for me. Be blessed. Your best is yet to come.